This is Susanna Magenheimer, Random Artist 222. And today I'm doing a basics jelly printing video with a twist. Um, what inspired this video was this one that you see down here with the uh, quatrefile stencil from the Crafters Workshop. Um, the colors really impressed a lot of people and they wanted to know what colors I was using. Um, so I'm gonna twist up the colors a little bit in my demonstration, but I will tell you that these colors were um, Master's Touch acrylic um, in flush um, and in antique gold and from Paper Artsy Fresco Finish Aqua Duck Egg, my favorite color. And um, I don't have it out, but a Payne's Gray, and that's what you see here, this darker um, bit over here. Okay. So I'm going to zoom out for a minute. Um, so here's just some samples so you can see. This is um, deli paper. So when I go in, and I'll be showing this, when I go in to um, take off paint so that I can add it back on later, I use tissue or deli paper. Um, it makes a beautiful um, effect that you can use in other projects. And so I definitely have a serious stash of them, as you can see here. Um, this one's really pretty with the, the fern. And um, my suggestion is when you're starting out with jelly prints, um, don't, don't be hard on yourself. It does take a while to learn how to do this. It's not, with me, it wasn't something that I picked up right away and I was like, yay, I did it. Um, I actually tried it, put my plates away, got fed up and slowly brought myself back into it. Um, one of the people that inspire, or a couple of the people that inspire me are Bergie Koopson, who heads up a challenge with Jelly Prints um, twice a year that I always participate in. And also Jackie from Creations by J. Sherry, that's S-H-E-R-I, and there'll be a link in the description below. She has a way of finessing the Jelly Print plate that just um, inspires me all the time. Since the holiday seasons are upon us, I'm going to show you how to make these really cute um, jelly angels. And uh, you can see here that this one I did with the flesh, um, the duck egg, and this time I switched it up to a um, raw umber um, instead of the Payne's Gray because the Payne's Gray was a very um, distinctive and dark um, effect that I, in the end, didn't want for these angels. But let me step back one step. Um, the basics for jelly printing are is as follows. You need a jelly plate. Now there are several on the market. My best suggestion is to test drive. They all of them, all of them sell these um, little three by fives and even smaller, smaller versions that you can try and see what you like. The reason I say that is because some plates are very like this one, very stiff. Other plates are thicker and they more, they're more bendy. Um, the bendier ones for me personally aren't as successful as the stiffer ones because um, I think it's the amount of pressure I put on it or just the way I manage a plate. Um, these seem to work better for me. But again, it's up to you. Try them out, see what they're like because all of them have their pros and cons, but the stiffer ones for me have been more successful. Um, you'll need printer paper cut to, and this is a five by seven plate, and so that you have them ready to start going. Because once you start putting the paint down, you want to move. Um, and then also, you want to have your tissue paper, paper, like I said, so that you can pick up the backgrounds. You need um, stencils, and in this case, my angel stencils that you see here are from Retro Cafe Arts. And um, if you're interested in them, she made these custom for me. So um, she said that if you're interested in them, go ahead and send her a DM or email her and um, she'll produce them for you. She made them in three sizes for me. This, I don't know if you can see this one here. Let me do this. This huge one here, which I love because you can even do more on the inside of these angels. Um, so that's that. Um, let me put this aside. The other stencil I'll be using today too is um, from the trading company um, and it's any stencil with open spaces, intricate spaces for the detail work you want to do is the way I go. So um, 
the first thing I do is I put a piece of washi tape on here so I know what the top because every jelly plate comes with this film or acrylic sheet and it protects the plate and you want to make sure you you do that I like to know what the top is that's just my thing um, keep it to the side and now you have your plate I'm not worried about what's below that's just stuff that's accumulated on the back end of this um, and the other thing you need is a brayer and there's several on the market just you know again test the one that works for you they're not that expensive and um, the right brayer for your weight the way you work it um, is uh, is well worth the the trials of testing it out I also use on the side here a lot of people use paper towel some people use um, just copy paper I like to use basil cardstock. It's a heavyweight cardstock, and the reason I like it is because if you use paper towel and that thing starts to soak up and you come back with your brayer, what happens is the paint that's accumulated on the brayer gets stuck to that paper towel and then you end up with divots in your in your brayer. Um, I clean mine after each use, but if you're doing it during if you're applying it during the use, and a piece of that paper towel gets stuck to this, then you're gonna get an awful tracking on your um on your paint and again some people don't mind it i i do so um and the reason i like the basil is because i can go over and over and over this and it's not gonna um it acts as a really good um pickup piece and i have done a lot of these so i have like hundreds of um stash papers um so if you want to save your papers do them on copy paper or lighter paper whatever you want um and let's see okay so coming back to these angels i'm going to move this out of the way because they will stick to this okay so these angels it was a happy accident because when i did them and i'll be showing you the process i ended up with this really cool border down here and what I did is I extended it up to create these really tall angels. And you'll see what I did to make them really fun and unique and fresh. And something that you can apply to a card afterwards and send out as a holiday greeting, whatever you'd like to do. But I also want to show you that with jelly printing, it's like a snowflake. None of them are the same. So will I ever be able to catch this darkness up here and this teal or the egg down here and then this again? It just depends on how the paint lays when you do it. You can see here, this is the paint's gray, and this is what I was talking about. It's a really dark contrasty to the teal. It worked with the other print I showed earlier because of the nature of the stencil I used, but because these are things that I want to stamp on and add um, um, doodling and other things to, I wanted something that wasn't so stark. And again, here's another version. And again, you can see how different um, they come across. It just, it just depends on how thick the paint was when I was applying it and how it happens. So don't be like, oh, it's not happening. It's Just don't expect them to be the same. Here's a different version of the angels, a more moodier, um, somber looking piece. Um, this one, obviously, I would ink in white um, to get the contrast to show better. Um, but again, I just love the fact of this border that pops up down here. Um, and let's see. And then this is also something I will show you. After you get the imprint of this, you can get something that looks like this afterwards. So we'll be showing that. And then here is, here are the angels. And um, I'll show you this in a minute, but this is how they come to become angels this aside okay so in this case I'm going to be using first the aqua duck egg and the raw umber from Lucas and this is from paper artsy and the first rule of jelly printing is and that's jelly printing I'm not saying deli but jelly printing is not a lot of paint no matter every time I think I've don't have I have too much or I don't have enough I end up putting too much so again it depends on 
where you where you want the colors to pop and how and it's just kind of like I like to go corner a corner a corner a corner when I apply this and I also apply just a little bit in the middle like that and now the brown is definitely going to overpower what I do here so I need to be really careful about what I do so I'm gonna just add a drop and literally that's a drop right and I'm gonna add another drop here and another drop right there and that's almost too much paint as it is that's why a lot of people do the um, do the stash paper on the right side to gather up all that paint but like I said some of us have done so many of these that there's a lot I want to add a touch of gold to this so I'm just tapping it I'm not putting a blob or anything I'm just tapping it enough to get that gold to be there in the background so let me move these out of the way Okay, so this is how I do it. I first start out bringing my colors down like that, right? And I'm gonna squish that a little bit and put it over here. And then I'm gonna come down the middle and then here. And I can already tell I'm getting too much brown in this. So I'm going to add just a drop more brown or blue here. Okay. But this is what you kind of want to see how your color or how the palette's developing on your paper so i know i have too much brown on here so i'm going to take it off on here and look how cool that is oops sorry about my hair that's a really cool print so again i'm going to come back here i'm going to go like this i'm going to go like that and now the blue's coming back into the picture here so i'm happy with that and now what i do is i turn it I take off the excess off my brayer and then I bring it down the other way. You need to be cognizant of the fact that depending on what kind of paint you use, your paint will, dr some paints dry really fast. The fresco paints, I love them, but they do dry fast. So, um, which kind of is a benefit and, a, and a, an issue because if I wanna do this, I need to be absolutely sure as to what I want to be doing so now I have this down here so now what I'm going to do is I'm flipping this back over and I'm bringing in my my stencil and I'm laying that down and now I'm bringing in my paper this is my deli paper and I'm just trying to pick up all that paint that is on here You know, pick it up if you have to and look a little bit. Yeah, I see that it's all coming off. Okay. If your plate is too juicy and there's too much paint, when you lift this off, you'll know because it won't look good at all. Now I'm going to bring this stencil down to here and continue with my deli paper and pick it up. Now I'm using the light from my window to see let me see if I can get the camera in here where I want it. Do you see how the lines here are pretty um, distinct? You can see them, right? That's what you want. If you notice that there's too much paint, you'll notice this all this paint in between and you won't have that distinction of the stencil and you know you're gonna end up with too juicy a plate and your effect will not be as dramatic. Okay. And now you end up with this beautiful Look at that, isn't that beautiful? Deli paper. Yeah. Okay. And pull that off. Okay. All right. So I'm gonna bring it back this way. And now what I'm going to do I'm just gonna make sure I dry it a little bit. I don't want to dry it a lot because then it's hard to pick up the print again. But now I'm going to again you do not want a lot of paint. I mean it should just be dabs. 
Okay, and now I'm going to very gently You know, okay, so you notice this time I didn't dab a lot over here because this is a really thin coat, so I didn't have to worry about that. So now I'm going to bring this in. I can see the stencil behind, and I want that border to show up. So I'm going to stick this down, and I'm going to bring this in. And starting from the outside in, especially this border, I'm going to start a lot of pressure to get that up because I'm putting more pressure than normal because I'm using a fresco paint which dries fast and I want to be able to pick that up the um, flesh the orange color that I put on there the light orange is um, reconstituting those colors below even though they dried um, and if you do it right yeah You're gonna uh, look how beautiful this is. See how the the duck eggs up there and the brown and just these are just gorgeous. So um, and then if you look here, you can see that gold popping through the angels a little bit there. Yep. So that's how you get the angels. I'm not gonna apply a lot of this to. Again, I'm using the three point idea and I'm using four paints here and they're all from Paper Artsy. They just came out with this. You have Iceberg, Blue Jeans, Blue Smoke, and Wolf Eye. And the reason that I'm in love with these are, is the reason I'm sharing this with you right now. Again, I'm gonna do a three point now the other way. Last color. Okay, so I'm saving my blue jeans for the um, the final color that I'll pick up everything with. So now that I got all these three colors on here, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going back and forth, kind of seeing how my colors lay out. And I'm really happy with that. I can see the variegation of the colors. So now I'm going to turn the plate. And again, super happy with the way that's looking. Take off some of the excess. Okay, so I'm going to bring back my angels. And I'm not doing a pattern behind it this time. I just want to show you guys something with these four colors. Trying to get in their heads and the wings, especially the bottom. Yeah. So this is what I get. And it just reminded me of um, the sky. And if you look at this one that I did, it's my stunt double. Look at, doesn't it look like clouds are moving? Like clouds are moving through the sky here. It's just, I love that effect. You can see it down here too. It's just like clouds are going through it. Um, so those are the colors I use to create that effect of the clouds. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and clean this and I'll be right back. Okay, so this is kind of the evolution of the angels now. Um, this one, like I said, what I did is I carried my line and I usually like to do this in the comfort of my um, of my sofa because I have a little bit of a shaky hand. But I carry that down, as you can see here, right? Um, and then I like to outline my angel. So I'm not too concerned about being precious and perfect about 
the line. So I'm just going to come back even a second time. And I'm going to make it like some funky sewing hack job on the side. Okay. So that's that. Oops. See, and it doesn't matter that I f got funky on that bottom corner because I'm going to trim it back. So I would go all the way around the angel with that. And then one of the things I like to do is I like to take um, a Copic marker. In this case, it's E40. And I just like to add a little color to that white so it's not so glaring. Oops. And that doesn't matter to me because I'm going to be cutting that off. Okay, so don't... Don't worry about it. Okay, so basically I come in with the, pen, the marker, the alcohol marker and do that. And then what I like to do is the next step that you see here. I now have my angels and I've outlined them all and I've done the alcohol marker on each of them. And in this case, I decided I wanted to add little crowns to them, little um, halos of various this is where you can go crazy and do wonderful things with these. Um, because I haven't cut them out yet, I can even do this. This is an indigo blue stamp and it is Moz, which is my ultimate, ultimate favorite stamp in the world, or Moz. And I probably should be using a better background holder, but what you can do is that's a first impression, right? And then what I can do is come in and do this. And now when I cut her out, she's going to have these little moths floating around in her. Um, could do it in blue ink as well. Um, or I can highlight these now with blue ink and make them look really cute. Um, the other thing I like to do with these is I like to put a little affirmation at the bottom. So I'm just taking just a little word. In this case, hope. And the last thing that I didn't show you that I did, and I'm going to zoom in here so you can see it. Do you see these teeny tiny snowflakes? I mean, we're literally looking at an inch here, okay? And these teeny tiny little baubles. I'm going to go in even closer. Um, these are the smallest stamps you'll ever see, and they are so detailed. And they are from Rubber Stamp Tapestry. I'm going to come back out for a minute. And I'll just show you. This one's called um, Snowstorm, and I've mixed up my peg stamps, so, but these are all like... Like snowflakes. Super, super detailed snowflakes. And um, here's some more. I don't know if I can catch that in... Yeah. Okay. Um, just perfect for this type of ornamentation. Um, let me take these out for you really quick, too. This one is um, Christmas baubles. And again, I've mixed up my peg stamps, so apologies. But I want to show you how small these are. Okay? And how gorgeous they are. Okay, imagine little Christmas trees that you stamp as you can put these on. Um, let me put this to the side. And so finally, what the outcome is, is I went and took my orange angels, which I'm into orange right now for some reason. And I did the exact same thing. I traced them out, did all this um, doodling and noodling as I call it. And I came out with these, these guys right here. These little beauties. And I'm gonna get in there really tight so you can see all that ornamentation that I did. I highlighted some of them with um, highlighter pen, with a um, neon pen. But the insides, I, I love this little white space because I can create a little scene in them. And I gave each of them an affirmation, truth, hope, and love. I took a really cool stamp from the Tim Holtz selection. And I don't know what set this is from, so my apologies. But I stamped words. Let me get close, really close. I stamped words into them on the sides. 
here. I gave them each a heart. You can go to, you can do millions of things with these to decorate them and make them your own. So I hope you liked what you saw and that it inspired you. Please remember to subscribe and like. It makes a huge difference in how YouTube sees me and lets me go up in the searches with the big, with the big kids. And um, I truly appreciate it. So thank you and have a great day.